Hello, welcome back. This is Pro Till Dev. This will be the third day of the game jam. This one's quite long because there's quite a lot I cover in a small amount of time. It took about uh, five hours worth of footage, four to five hours, but I've cut it down as much as I can. Uh, here we go. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was to work on a first person controller. Um, I didn't like the third person controller all that much. I I'm more uh, I like more first person games because you can get more immersed in them and I feel like they're you usually much closer to objects that way and I just like the immersion more and I just didn't like the way I'd done the third person controller I didn't really like, feel like it was very natural and, and quite nice so I decided to adapt the, uh, the scripts that I've got and change them into first person controllers as opposed to third person so that's what I'm doing, I'm just doing a quick rename with the uh, scripts and then changing the code. Now like I said, this uh, this footage is like really long. I have quite a lot of things that I cover in a much smaller amount of time. So there'll be times where the images will just skip through, the where the footage will just kind of skip through things and you'll just have to slow it down for yourself to be able to really understand it. Hopefully I can explain as much as that as possible. So here I am just testing to make sure it's working, changing the code uh, and the movement. Then I wanted to get the horizontal and vertical uh, inputs. Which is just basically things I've done in the past. Um, I did it in my turtle trial, this is usually how I would control the inputs manually. Um, but this way I can get rid of the code below make it a little bit more efficient. So there we go, I got rid of that code, don't need it. Once that's done I apply all the code, make sure it's all working and slight glitch there. But that's an easy fix by just getting rid of the um, rigid body for now. So as you can see I'm a little bit high up and I'm trying to immediately just test how all of the movement is. And as you can see it's working fine, not too many issues there. Then what I wanted to do was I wanted to change some of the, basically I wanted to have a jump in the game, I wanted the players to almost feel like they're floating. And this is where the idea kind of changes a little bit from being just a normal bug. So in the end I want it to be more of a spirit, a guardian spirit that has to take care of all these trees. And so I wanted there to be almost like a floating aspect, like jump into it. So I had to put in my own gravitor, rather than using a rigid body, I want it to be more customizable and I want it to have my own jump mechanic. Um, so I had to, in, in order to do that I obviously have to do a uh, ground check. Which is really straightforward to do, I've done it in the past, it's not too bad. Uh, not too bad. And just adding your own gravity is uh, much more flexible. So that's what this code is, it's just checking to see if I'm grounded. If I'm grounded uh, I should be able to jump and when I'm not grounded it should be lowering my velocity, um, my Y forcing me to the ground. With that I'm just applying them and then getting the ground mask so I can figure out which what objects are the actual ground that I can jump from. Um, changing them and then what I'll do is I'll go and put these, I'll, I'll go and put the specific layers on the objects I'll be jumping on as well, so you can check for them. So once I've got the mask, yep, I go to the platforms, which is where I'll be able to jump from, and set the layers to ground, so I can check if I'm touching them. And then add a bit of control, so when the button's pressed down, I'll be able to jump, and then check if, I'm jump, uh, if I can jump. And here I am just testing it. And then I wanted to increase the ground distance, so the ground distance was a bit of an annoyance because of scaling, I need to get the right positioning for it. 
and I was just testing it whether um, it was the correct distance or not. Uh, in the end what I decided to do was while I was in play I would test it that way by changing the distance and the height of the jump. So as you can see I, could, I managed to jump to the other island there. So all I'm doing is just testing it. Jumping across. See how I feel about it. How I feel about the gravity. And as you can see I can jump quite far. I'm also running quite quick because my speed is 100 at the moment. And I think it's okay for now. Then I changed the uh, the range, the scale of the trees because they're currently quite small. And then I move, I, I recreate the second, third, fourth, and fifth tree. This time I have a fifth tree, and then place them around in our different islands that we created in our last uh, in our previous day. So there we go. We have, we have our five trees. I set them all up. Make sure and assign the correct va uh, values, game objects, and things. Make sure everything's working. And I removed the positioning. You just saw it in the um, tree manager. I removed the positions because we didn't need them anymore of our spawn positions. And then I test it out. So once it gets to level five, it should spawn another tree somewhere else. Now what I do decide to do here is. Um, I want to check if the um, what stage the uh, the trees are, and I obviously have a do once because I only want it to be able to do once, and then spawn a specific tree or a group of trees in an area. And this was an idea that I thought would be really cool is to be able to see an island grow when you complete a stage on your island, another island will start to grow, indicating where you're supposed to go. So I create a quick uh, plant spawner and then create a prefab of it, um, if I remember correctly. Yep, and I've got all the different plants in there. And what I want to do is just spawn in a bunch of those trees on the other island. So every time I'd, I hit stage 5 on an island, the trees would spawn on another island. I thought it would look really interesting. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting the... Um, islands. I'm just going into the prefab and I'm going to put the spawners all over the place. Um, I add in a cube just so I know where they are and can see them. For now I can remove that later if I wanted to, which probably would. And then I just spawn a bunch of them uh, all across this prefab. So what I'm doing here, I also deleted the trees on my main island just so I could see better. And then there you go, I pressed, uh, I managed to grow the tree and all the trees spawned on the other islands. Now for now, because I wanted to be able to see the islands that I wanted, um, I quickly added in, I have these islands, but I only wanted to be able to see them much easier, so I deleted the other islands for now, I can always bring them back. And then as you can see the trees are growing I had a little bit more vegetation on my island because I didn't want any growing on my clear so I just added a little bit so my platform is actually different to the tree platform I'm actually using the a separate prefab even though they're very similar so I had a little bit of uh, vegetation Try this again. Get to level 5 and I'll see if the trees grow, which they did. They grow on both of them though, which is not what we want. We want them to only grow on one island. Now there's a couple of trees here that I left in the prefab, which I get rid of quickly. And what I want to do is I want to actually... Um, so at this point I decided to change it again. Instead of just spawning random islands everywhere it just didn't look natural and it happens so quick the player may not notice so what I decided to do was something very similar to how I've done the tree growing process so I bring in the process uh, progress left uh, countdown into this tree spawning because I want the trees to actually gradually grow from the other island I thought it would look really it maybe look interesting to be able to see it from distance to be able to see the trees grow like we do with our main plant so I'm implementing the code we've very, that's very similar to the code we've already done. 
The only difference is that I'm spawning it as a clone as opposed to turning, setting it active or setting it like true to false. Um, the only difference is that I'm instantiating it instead. So basically spawning it in and then spawning different clones in. Um, so that's the only difference. It's pretty much very identical. Um, and so I knew it would probably work very well. And it's just a matter of time of, you know, testing it and seeing if it looks okay. So I added in a couple of um, do once um, bulls. So here we go. This is where I test it. I go to the other island just to see what it looks like. And then we see it grow. So now I decide that you want to be able to jump across easier because the jumping is kind of too extreme. So I had a little platform in and I obviously have the second tree so I just want to be able to know if everything's working, um, if I can jump to the second tree and as you can see the trees are all growing, they all grow up and they get bigger. So that works. Uh, some of the coordinates weren't quite right on the adult trees, so I'm quickly setting them back to zero. Make sure they work. And obviously the position is now a bit broken with the adult trees. But I'm just testing it out to see what it looks like. And when it gets to the adult tree, it should end up flowing. So I realized it was just way too many, it was too full, so I got rid of a, quite a few spawners. Um, and then move this back to the center. Try to it once more. Of course, realize the adult trees are way too high, which fixed that very, very quickly. A lot of this is very much similar to how we've done so far, you know, kind of the same thing we did in previous days, just to really mess around. And then when I claim, we can see this one grow. So at this point I moved on to Blender and the reason I did is because I wanted more assets to be able to place and more objects in the scene to try and create a more unique environment and I decided that I wanted something that was kind of the opposite uh, of trees in, in a more iconic sense and the first thing I thought of when I think of forests was something like an enchanted forest with thorns and big vines. So this is what I wanted to do, I wanted to make a vine that was more curved, um, thorns, uh, and I also wanted to create one that was straight. So I've already shown pretty much Blender in a previous uh, video, um, I think it was the second day, like the last day. So I didn't want to really show too much of it this time, so I'm skipping through it quite quickly. Um, but it's very much the same, same process, extruding lines and then just changing them and scaling them to make them look more like a vine um, and in this case more like thorns so after creating that and then editing um, its shape as you can see we end up with this I add a bit of um, shading with the material change its roughness of course um, and that once that's completed I create another which is going to be more straight and for the map I decided that I wanted to make a cage almost, um, at least for the first level I wanted it to be a cage that's surrounded by thorns and then inside you'll have to go from platform to platform and then grow these trees and then once the trees are all fully grown you would, um, you would be able to win. So that was my idea now, um, that going forward, this is one of the reasons why I wanted this asset, is to get, uh, give a very much caged feel, and Thorns have always kind of done that in, um, in stories. So there we go, add the same material on, and then I imported it into uh, Unita. So with our vine in, what I decided to do was have a game object 
and then import our mesh um, so that we can create a prefab of it later and then make sure it's the right rotation because it's rotation was actually sideways. and so moving on what I decided to do is I got the scales correct for our vines and as I said in blender I wanted to make a cage so this is where I start doing it I create a bunch of the game objects just so I can basically create a cage out of it I think it looks quite interesting when it's finally done and I'm quite happy with it a little bit of maths to work out where things are supposed to be and then there we go, we got a little bit of a cage uh, that you can see. And then I make sure the rotations are correct and the uh, position is all correct um, for the mesh. And then scale up one of our straight uh, vines, our thorns, and surround the cage with them. Again, making, making it feel like the player is very much isolated, closed off. And I think it looks very cool. Uh, when you're the player looking around so I just make sure that all of the positioning is more or less correct like com symmetrical to a degree and I'm still trying to figure out how far away I want the play player to be able to see and that makes a big difference on the camera and the rendering and performance as you can see the camera can't quite see all of the game object so I changed the scale of some of the objects and I changed the viewing distance as well as the uh, FOV of the camera. After that I changed the gravity and the jump as well so I can jump a little bit higher but change the speed so you're a, bit, a little bit slower because it was a bit extreme before. And there we go, feels a bit more natural that way, kind of like it a little bit more. And then I create a second platform that you, the player will have to get to. And a third platform so the player can get to. Fourth platform and then should be a bunch of platforms where the player has to jump across to get to. And I plan to have vine, the vines that I've implemented, they're going to have meshes um, and I plan for the player to be able to jump across to certain ones. Once that's implemented, all of our, our platforms are in, I start in adding the trees back um, and positioning them where the platforms are. And then add a little bit of a waterfall feature with just a basic block and, and I'll bring in some rocks. So I create some game objects and as you saw yesterday we had a bunch of rocks low poly rocks that we created with the platforms so this now we're going to start using them and implementing them into the scene making sure that they're the right scale and making sure that they add like meshes that you can use and stuff of course I do a lot of playing around with this and I do with all the rocks and the scene like, I really enjoy creating scenes quite a lot like or rather rather than scenes environments I enjoy them quite a lot and I spend a lot of time on it sometimes too much time um, so here I'm trying to create some uh, a nice looking waterfall with the best of my abilities because again it, can, it still has to be blocker and I don't have time to do animations and things so I've got to make sure it looks okay changing the scale and again making sure that everything is okay and I've obviously created some prefabs so quick skip there and I've created a bunch of prefabs made the waterfall a little bit bigger just a different environment for the player to navigate around when they're being attacked and with all our prefab uh, prefabs of the rocks um, I can now just put them wherever I want in the scene I also wanted to add a base underneath the water this will help with creating a bit of tint to the water um, to the water and also um, make it so that if the player falls through the water and they hit the base they, they should teleport to a specific point so there we go um, I wanted to change the uh, skybox so I created a skybox material with the skybox default 
um, texture and then quickly change the tint of it to make it like, more creepier. I wanted this environment to be somewhat creeper but also kind of um, because there's supposed to be an element of danger, other things are supposed to be failing, you're supposed to be protecting these trees to save the day basically. So I kind of wanted that environment. But I think I, in the end I decided to change it to make it a bit brighter because it was a bit too much. It was a bit too, um, dare I say, Halloween-esque, like creepy. So I made it a little bit more nicer. Added a bit more uh, materials that I could play with. Just very simple colours for now. And then moved the player onto our platform and then tried it out. Very bright of course. And now what I'm doing is changing the intensity of the light, make sure it's okay. So that it's not too much. And then again changing the skybox to try get something that I really like. And the green was just too intense, it was too much green in the scene. Uh, so I changed it back to a more blue with an orange um, horizon. Because, like I said, the green was just too intense. I wanted a little bit of texture onto the, our islands, just to have some kind of difference. And all we got is part of the standard assets um, folder, so I decided to just bring in a mud texture with the normal map of mud and add that onto the game, uh, onto the islands, as well as change its uh, UV. Now you may notice quickly that I have a post-process volume here. Uh, that's something I just added very quickly. Um, I'm actually going to do some post-process. I can't remember if it's this day. I think it's a few days from now. Um, maybe the, I can't quite remember. But I do add post-processing it in to brighten things up and add a bit more detail to the light in. So here I'm just grabbing all the different trees and adding them, adding a bit of uh, organizing things is what I just did there into a game object so that I think my hierarchy isn't chaotic and then adding in a little bit of platforms um, a little bit of ways to get to different platforms from just jumping from vine to vine and um, just a little bit more diversity in when it comes to the jumping element and then for the very center tree I decided that I wanted a different type of color just to make it stand out especially when it's surrounded by green I wanted it to really stand out as a different colour, so I went with golden leaves and light, light yellow um, to help it stand out more. And I think it looks quite nice, so here we go, I'm changing all the different trees. Um, and it really, really stands out later um, when there's so much green. It really helps it to stand out, which is, it, which is exactly what I wanted. So now I wanted the spirit tree. Uh, seedling, sapling, and all the different things that I've already got. Um, and these are going to be prefabs, and inside we've got all the different meshes that we've already created. Um, so in the end, I decided that previously, as you saw earlier on in the video, we created, obviously I'm creating different textures here, but materials, because I went for pink lights for the spirit tree. Uh, like I said previously, we worked on growing on the individual islands trees would grow once you completed a certain section and I ran with that idea to create what's called the spirit tree and at the very center of the map all of the enemies are going to attack these uh, trees that are golden that you're going to have to go and protect and at the very center there's going to be the spirit tree which will grow as you complete each stage so what I've done is I've taken the idea of growing uh, trees on an island um, each time you complete a stage and then implement it to this one single tree in the center which indicates your progress and how much is left um, do a little bit of organizing here because I just don't need that code and this is just determining how um, when we reach a new tree growth for the spirit tree um, every time we hit stage 5 in the other one in the other tree health for each individual tree I add a scale as well scale a bit of code to scale the tree so each time it grows it's much bigger than its standard uh, size and then add in the own function uh, my own function so I can call it in any type of script I want in case I ever need to and of course I wanted to use it in the tree health as well 
to be able to call it. I had a little cylinder at the bottom just to know where the tree is and you know so that it's not clipping through the ground and then add in the scale, correct scale that I wanted which is 25, 25, 25 on the different vertices. I add in a, so at this point I wanted to change the bugs that are going to be on trees to the enemy, uh, to enemies that would attack the tree from different directions. It felt really weird for the, um, at this point, especially when you're not, the trees aren't that big, to be able to go and attack the bugs. And so what I decided was go for an enema. Um, so the code is very similar to how I've done Turtle Trials when enemies, but instead of 2D, it's now 3D. So basically, I'm determining the distance between the tree and the enema, and the tree and the player. So this is a little bit more advanced than before, but depending on if the enemy is closer to the player or the tree will determine their action. And if they're close to a tree, they're going to attack the tree, stay still and attack the tree. If they're close to the player, they're going to chase the player. If they're going to, if they're close enough to, uh, if the player isn't close enough to the tree then they'll go for that. So it's it's uh, pretty nice, I actually really liked it um, and I think I like it a lot more than how I've done the bugs. Here what I do is I add the bug damage in, so I'm still using the script which is the eat mechanic, um, but I realised that if I have multiple enemies um, it would be very difficult for the player to be aware of them and to do the eat mechanic you have to be holding uh, be completely in place and it really narrows the view that the player can see. It also slows the flow of the gameplay because the player won't be able to see around them if enemies are coming and then once they break the eat mechanic they're suddenly they're surrounded by enemies you know and, and attacking the tree so I ended up removing that code um, and I think I'll try something new in the next day in order to deal with the enemies. So yeah, that was the third day. Hopefully I managed to cover everything. I tried my best. There was a lot in this um, footage that I had to cut down. I managed to acquire quite a lot in that small amount of time. So yeah, stay tuned for the next day, uh, day four. And I think we'll find a way to counteract the, um, the enemies. See you next time.